one skill we're going to have a lot of fun with, and that's paddling through waves. Now, there's a few techniques that you need to learn in order to make running through waves easy. Number one, when we first start hitting waves, you're going to feel tense, and you're going to want to lift your knees and tighten up your hips. And what that's going to do is that's going to make you feel less balanced instead of more balanced. The key to running through waves and getting comfortable for the boat going up and down, the, the boat rocking side to side, is to completely relax your body. Now, how do you do that? Think about just sitting in a chair. Literally plop your rear end on the seat, boom, and just sit there. Do not attempt to try to hold the boat right side up or to try to keep it from moving around. Sit in the bottom and let the boat do whatever the waves want to do to it. What that's going to do is allow you to keep your body right side up actually separating your boat from your body and the boat's going to rock around on the waves while your body's just going to sit there. So instead of, of locking your body up, if you lock your body up, when the wave tries to tip your boat a little bit, it throws your body with it and that's what's going to cause you to tip over. Now do you run waves straight ahead pointing straight downstream? Do you run them sideways at an angle? Yes, you do. You can run them any old which way you want, even backwards. But as you're learning, you're going to find that if you're just floating down the river and you're going to go ahead and go straight through a rapid without any real maneuvering, it's probably easiest to point the bow downstream so you can really see where you're going and go straight through the waves. However, within a short amount of time, you're going to start realizing that you're going to be in waves and need to catch an eddy. So if you need to catch an eddy while you're in waves, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be sideways. Is that bad? No, not at all. Running through waves sideways is just as easy as running them straight down. In a lot of ways, even easier. And the reason is because when you're running sideways, the way that almost every time if you were to tip, you'd be tipping upstream, what that means is you always know which way to lean your boat slightly, and that's downstream. So when running waves sideways, it's the same thing as running them pointed straight downstream. You're going to relax your body. You're going to keep your weight over the boat. You're not going to try to lean the boat one way or another to try to keep right side up. Again, you're just going to sit your rear end on the bottom and let the boat rock with the waves. That's the easiest way to stay right side up. Also, by just sitting there, it's not difficult to maintain that position. It doesn't require a whole lot of thought. You just relax and sit there. That frees your brain up and have enough brain power to go ahead and paddle and get to where you want to go. As we go from a class one rapid, which is just very little waves, it might move your boat around a little bit, but it won't feel, make you feel like you're going to lose your balance. And moving to class two, the waves start to develop. And as we move closer and closer to class three, those waves are going to become bigger, more developed, and they're really going to allow your boat to rock up and down and side to side. That's when it really starts getting exciting. Now, contrary to popular belief for most beginners and people learning to kayak, as the waves get bigger, they don't actually get any more difficult. They simply make your boat do bigger rocks, but if you keep your weight over the boat, it's the same thing. You're not going to find yourself losing your balance. Now, as you start getting up to class three, however, the waves not only go up and down, but they start breaking on themselves. A breaking wave, as it's called, it has some of the features of a hole. When you hit the wave, it's going to crash, it's going to splash you in the face, very cool. It's also going to slow your boat down. So one of the key elements to running through waves as they start to break is to keep your stern out of the water as it slows down so it doesn't try to catch your stern a little bit, cause you to lose your balance. So as we start running a little bit bigger waves and hit class three, the key is going to be to get our body weight forward and reach our paddle over the wave. That gets, allows us to paddle through the wave and keeps our stern out. Now when we start hitting breaking waves sideways, we have a technique for that as well. As we hit the wave sideways, we're going to be going up the wave and the foam pile is going to slow us down and try to surface a little bit. Not only that, but that foam pile is going to hit us in the body and it's going to try to push our body upriver a little bit. That's going to allow our upstream edge to catch and it's going to try to tip us over. So we need to be prepared for that. How do we prepare for that? As we're going sideways and hitting a breaking wave, we need to make sure that we have our paddle in on the downstream side and are holding our upstream knee up just slightly. That's all that needs to happen to allow us to hit the wave, slow down, and go right over it in perfect balance. The, other, the, the reason that we put our downstream paddle in the water is it simply allows us to brace if we need to. As far as your bracing technique goes, I'm not going to go super in depth in bracing because we've got a video called EJ's Rolling and Bracing, of which you can learn those skills in depth, and I highly recommend it if you haven't learned it already. 
being able to roll on a river and being able to brace are one of the key elements to, to uh, being able to stay right side up or rewriting yourself if you tip. What we're going to try to do is get you down the river, right side up, and learn about the features in the river. Like holes, not all waves go straight across the river. Some of them are diagonal or angled waves, otherwise known as reactionary waves. Now, what makes these waves different is if you're paddling straight down the river and you hit a diagonal wave, it's going to try to turn your kayak. If you're pointing straight down river and you hit a diagonal wave, it's going to turn you. Why? Because it's going to hit your bow and railroad you along the wave, basically deflecting you off the path you're originally going on. So how do you get past the diagonal wave without getting deflected? You need to hit it perpendicular to the wave. By hitting it perpendicular, you can get over the diagonal wave, turn back downstream, and head down the river. Here's an example of a reactionary that if you don't get over, it's going to surf you all the way from river left, all the way back to river right. And then if you look downstream below that, there's another diagonal that's going to surf you all the way from river right, all the way back to river left, if you don't punch through that. Is this good or bad? Yes, it is good or bad, depending on what you want to do. If you want to maneuver from one side of the river to the other, remember those diagonals are there to help you. The real key to getting through the diagonal is getting speed up towards it before you hit it. If you float into it sideways, even perpendicular, it's going to slow you down and back surf you to the wrong side of the river. So remember, carry speed right through like Milt just did in that canoe. That was a perfect technique. Awesome.